and so I, I suspect that's part of you know the, uh, the you know people get conditioned to uh, it's really hard to buy a key. So I, I think that we may you know keep, keep it really accessible and simple. Um, you know then um, you know we'll get a great many more keys sold. And uh, um, you know so for my family you know I just want to say express appreciation for providing uh, the courts. Uh, um, you know the services that Allen offers are just awesome. Um, we don't have a tennis court at home. We don't belong to any country clubs. And so this is something that is just a, a huge part of uh, what we value in the community as well. Thank you. Jennifer Jeffries, 52 Fairview. Um, first of all, it's exciting to see people interested in our uh, art. I have two kids and now two dogs, and we have enjoyed going to school and playing in Holder Palmer Park. And currently, they and we play lacrosse, baseball, soccer, tennis, and dog walk at the park and enjoy being, having it available to us. The town is out of control, calling people names and being demeaning about them. Their friends, relatives, it's just as embarrassing as an average domestic. Removing the tennis courts or thinking about removing the tennis courts from the park is not the answer to the problem <coughs> here, and I know that's not what you all think either. Tennis is part of the park, as is Alan Marga. <coughs> Again, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean disrespect to any of you up here. <coughs> the town is out of control. With the library placement, we are a community which is blessed with Holden Common Park. We are not focused on what is needed. If the library is costing us this much angst and loss of judgment, then maybe we should take a moment and look at what is working well, which we have some things that are working well in this town, and continue to have them work well. <coughs> on the other hand, we have a lot of improvements that need to have. At this point, this town needs to get control of what is controllable and relook at what the angst is all about. And the angst is about library and a lot of other things. <coughs> I personally like where the library it is. I've used it, but I also like that the library can move to the park. I have raised a lot of money, worked with a lot of you have been friends with many of you and continue to be. And I support this community. I do not support what is happening with the angst and the d disruptive emails and <coughs> not knowing what is going on. I think you all need to help rally the town and have better judgment and help the community to learn to have better judgment. I know you've put a lot of information out there but there's so much angst around here that it's hard to see through it. Please, um, that's all I have to say, and I, I hope that we can make, get an answer and get control of the because a lot of the comments so far have been very similar, and there's lots of you here, and we've got a lot of things to cover. So if uh, I'm more than happy to, to take a poll how many people are here to support the library and if there hasn't been something that's been said No, not that, excuse me, on the, on the tennis sports then, it, then because we just talked about the library um, You know, I think we got the message on that there's support for the library or excuse me, for the tennis sports <laughs> And so unless you have something you need to say about the tennis sports um, That would be good I'd like to continue press on with other other items that people do want to talk about that are not involving the tennis courts. Okay, unless just one more thing about the tennis courts. I'll make it really quick. I live right. right here on Maple Avenue. My kids have gone over there. We're full support. Alan Marco has his camps, which all the kids love. And not only that, he has employed the kids who get too old for his camp. So I thank him for that, and I'm in full support to keep our tennis thank courts not losing. Thank you. My name is Ann McNerney and I was at the last uh, town council meeting. And at that town council meeting, 
Mr. Dolby and Ms. McKeith and made serious uh, uh, queries as to whether only 29 keys were sold and maybe is that the best use of the tennis courts and they're in bad re repair. And although you did not talk about directly tearing up the tennis courts, certainly there was a lot of concern that you were sort of looking at that space possibly to build, uh, you know, permanent uh, structure for, or permanent viewing stands for the Little League or a possible space for something else. So I'm here to say that I think the town of Atherton should have the tennis courts every time I walk by there, even though there may not be only 29 keys, keys sold, I always see people <coughs> using it. I also object to the fact that it seems like a small bunch of people tend to think that something that was left for the enjoyment of all people in Atherton seems to, through an abuse of the political process, by the very same two people who seem to go to the newspapers, who seems to only print uh, their side of the story most of the time, uh, I'm referring to the almanac, and I hear the owner of the Almanac is friends with one of the major proponents of the library in the park, so that's not a surprise. However, Ms. McKeithen, I think that from your comments, you would be crazy not to think that in the last meeting that the tennis courts were not being eyed for other uses. And like many things, you say one thing, but you seem to do the other. And you certainly don't seem to represent us. And this is not an odd hominid thing. Their angst has been created because there's a lack of representation. And perhaps Atherton should go back to a Vermont form of town meetings, because you don't seem to be doing your job. And I think you should listen to the meeting when we discussed the tennis courts and the budget and what we said about the budget. I was here, and I listened. Very I don't think you did. No. I think you misrepresent greatly. Any other public comments? <laughs> I think Charles was up first. Then. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. Charles, please. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Denise Kupperman, and I am um, a member of the Hobart Palmer Park Foundation and a member of the African Danes. And I have um, loved the park, and uh, there are uh, great needs in terms of infrastructure, improvement, and upkeep, and maintenance. And we all love the park. But there's not much money for the park. And if all of us who really love the park were to look at the town budget and to understand what is truly available to look after the buildings, the tennis court, the little league, the play field, the parking lot, the plantings. We don't have enough. And our parcel tax goes towards other infrastructure that we need. Our police department, roads, tree removal, and things that happen during storms. And there's a small amount left for the park. The park, which was left to us, is in great part supported by philanthropy. And the group, the Holbrook Park, Palmer Park Foundation, works quite hard to engage the community in that philanthropy. But it hasn't been easy. And there's not much funds forthcoming. So I think as a community, we need to have a very honest conversation about how much we really love it and what we're willing to pay for. Because my experience is that we've come to a place where we want a lot of things for almost nothing. And my hope is that as a community, we could have a good, positive conversation about how we'll support our park. And if it's not through our tax dollars, my hope is that all the people that are in this room will come to the next Dames event and support grand philanthropy. Thank you. Charles Marsala, 33 Emily. Quickly on the tennis courts, when those were put in, they were raised with them, put in with donations.
donations, and a fee was charged as much as $200 per year to the tennis key holders at the time. And as we learned back then, that money went into the town's general fund and was spent for other things. So to say that so if we do decide to allocate some funds, I think you should let the public know that it actually funds were raised decades ago, could have earned a tremendous amount of interest and paid for resurfacing, so we're not taking funds out of any other kitty. We're just finally correcting the mistake that happened years ago. Uh, my other thoughts, though, that I was here to speak on are uh, a few years back, we, had a, a, we discussed a long policy about how items are put on the agenda. And we had a, a, I'd argue that we should allow two council members to present a colleague's memo, and then the, they would discuss, the council would discuss it, and the following meeting, if it was approved by the council, it would be discussed. But I see this year that it's not been happening. Last week, or last council meeting, we talked about the charter cities. Um, the current, the item 14, there was no discussion about sending a letter to the Athertonians as an agenda item, and it seems repeatedly now that the um, items appear on agendas that are not presented as a councilman's idea the month before so that the town perhaps has more time to respond and be prepared to discuss at a meeting as opposed to learning on a Friday night. The other part I wanted to talk about was on item 14. Um, and I saw a police officer getting sworn in and take an oath as we did as council members to protect the Constitution. Item 14, the Athertonians list, is about freedom of speech. And to Mr. Ruggiero's comments, you can register by just Googling after you can. I checked on this, so my, my time here. But I, I didn't know this existed, but there's a page that I, I found only this week that says how to register for that list. And that's easy to do. The um, one person here emailed me earlier today that said, um, I'd like to join, but don't know how. I think the, town, the town's attempt to get the blog's name changed is ridiculous and a waste of city resources. The letter had words in it of inaccurate accusations, unfounded claims, and undermining the council. When I asked for the council to back these up or staff to support what's unfounded, what's inaccurate, that's on the block, there was nothing. And it seems like the council itself in this letter was going to undermine this group, which just seems to spread word about traffic, sudden earth death syndrome, and other things in the town that are going on uh, that are really, for eight years, this group has existed just to email it out. Uh, news events. Unfortunately, they, they did a survey that came back that most people don't want to move the library to the park, and since then, they've been uh, receiving these emails from staff that you've got to change your name, or you've got to do this or do that. But I, I do think if you Google and I'll send you the link on it, you'll find out how to register. I haven't been alone. Hmm? I have not been alone to join. I don't know <laughs> there is posted on their site. Three minutes. <clears throat> well, oh, okay. No. okay. There's posted on their site some of these answers to these allegations of anyone who wasn't. But I do know that they got a lot of people. <clears throat> okay. I just have a quick comment. I'm very used to Yahoo. I don't usually get involved in things like this. But reading through this agenda, I see eighteen thousand dollars, five hundred for a survey. And well, I think uh, you can't talk about things that are on oh. the agenda. I can't have to wait until the agenda comes up. Can I say, you said for the tennis court stuff? I'm sure can you can say whatever, you, well, that say we whatever you'd have like about the tennis courts. That's okay. fine. Okay, right. so I'm seeing that we might have funds to use for the tennis court if we put other things on balloting. <laughs> Are there any other public comments? <laughs>
Thank you. My name is Mario Thorndike. I live on Mariana Lane. I've been a key holder for more than 10 years. <coughs> I'll try to say only new things that actually might complement what's been said here. With respect to money, it's just for Can you use the mic, please? Okay. Ms. Kupperman seems to have stepped out. Um, I was a few years ago on a very short lived tennis committee that was a subcommittee of parks and rec. Uh, of uh, people including, that included people who were tennis players and not tennis players, but all of whom had an interest in maintaining the courts, literally and figuratively. And a number of creative ideas were surfaced to actually generate some revenue to help offset the maintenance costs of the courts. And those went nowhere. And I would just like to encourage uh, the council to, uh, when the subject of tennis courts and their costs and funds for maintenance come up and how to find those funds, Perhaps they might want to um, include in dialogue some of the ideas for generating revenue, um, such as tennis socials, um, hosting USTA teams, charging for special events, renting out the courts to non key holders <coughs> in certain constrained situations. So there are a lot of possible ideas for generating revenue that could help maintain the courts. I also want to mention a lot of people have said Alan's great. All of us who are tennis players know Alan Margo was great. Um, unless I'm mistaken, none of you are tennis players, and you may or may not know that Alan is actually a regional resource. He's considered an expert in his field, and um, people come from all over the Bay Area um, to work with Alan, and he's a tremendous asset to this community, to the park, to the people who have taken lessons from him, whose kids have taken lessons from him, and I think he's one of the um, treasures that should be preserved as part of the consideration of the tennis courts. Thank you. Any other public comments? Peter? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to first thank you as council members for the <coughs> service that you perform to the community. Having said that, I would also like to go on and talk a little bit about the issue that was raised by item 14, which has been removed from the agenda. The U.S. Constitution and the California Constitution provide special protections for freedom of speech. They particularly provide for the fact that speech, there should be no prior restraint. Now, one of the things about prior restraint simply means that people should be allowed and in fact cannot be impeded from saying what they want to say. That doesn't say that what they say doesn't have consequences. And if people say something that is libelous or malicious or inappropriate, you know, we do have checks and balances in our system for responding to those. Now you as elected officials, as I well know, uh, have less protection against libel and malice than the average citizen. In your case, the standard of proving libel and malice is somewhat higher. Uh, but you still have legal protections for individuals who might libel you or engage in malice. And I would just urge you, as you consider this issue in your deliberations in future meetings, to give paramount importance to the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of California, and the very clear statement in both of them that we should not engage in prior restraint. That does not mean that people should not be held accountable for what they say. You know, those are two different issues. And I'm speaking here tonight not in support of what anybody has said, but in support of their right to say it. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? I'll just take a minute. My name is Stuart Aubrey, and I wanted to show everyone here back that was posted for many years on court six mm -hmm. at the tennis court that almost a hundred families donated to over mm -hmm. and it is in need of shining up and hopefully it goes back from events. There are a number of people who sadly have left us but there are about four people that are on here that are still using the courts. Any other public 
public comments? So Frank, uh, Eagle Scout, Frank Merrill, would you like to make a public comment? I, I, I didn't see in the back. I, I had my card. I was holding my card up when you <laughs> I would have. I would have recognized you publicly, so I'll okay. do so now. Uh, I, I saw everybody at uh, Eagle Scout. First Eagle Scout in Troop 206, oh, by the way. And you're not. Just a few short years ago. Um, I guess there was one public comment that I wanted to just make my own personal comment about since almost everybody else has made one. Um, I, uh, I've, I've had the, uh, the opportunity to learn about and to view items that were on the website that uh, Mr. McKeithen spoke about. And, um, and I do agree with him that uh, certain items that are on that that website were um, are for me very inappropriate. Uh, I would not uh, want to see them written about anybody, friend or foe. I would never write them about anybody, friend or foe. Uh, and uh, and I and I certainly will not uh, propagate them by posting them on any website or encouraging people to go look at them. So, and I. One of the ways you stop that type of activity is to do the same. So um, I just wanted to make my comments uh, clear on that. So anyway, any other council members want to say something who haven't said something already? Well, I, I would also like to comment on it, and uh, I recognize everybody in this country is free to, free to speak their mind and generally speaking. People who speak their mind also put the name. In, so you know who it is to speak. To me, this kind of stuff, this anonymous comments, is mainly posted by what I call cowards. Because if they really, they can call me any names they like, but stand up and say who they are when they call me these names. And to me, when I see this kind of stuff in Atherton, it makes me sick, actually, that we have degraded the town to this extent where we have a whole book of anonymous comments uh, and nobody is willing to stand up and take responsibility for it. Now, you know, it's not, not a legal question. It's, is this the town that we want to have? Uh, this is the way that repressive regimes have taken over countries. And in my mind, anonymous comments are totally worthless. You should not be considered. I, would, I think we have a good idea who's, who is behind those anonymous comments. But I would say to them right now, Come and say those things to my face, and I will have no problem with it whatsoever. Thank you. Sure. So, you know, uh, since everyone's talking about this um, website, uh, I know how it feels to be uh, attacked by residents, um, and so I feel. Um, Sympathy and empathy for Councilman Keithen um, <clears throat> by this anonymous attack. Um, I feel that when I ran for council in 2008, um, someone put out a wanted poster with my face, my campaign picture on it, for crimes against the city of Atherton, accusing me of uh, doing wrong things with the building department. That continued, those harassments, those attacks continued in all of 2008 and then resurfaced again in 2010. There was investigations and it was completely unfounded, anonymous uh, accusations. So I understand how uh, it feels. And I also have elderly parents. I've spent the most of the last six weeks up in Santa Rosa with my 85-year-old mother who uh, had completely well, replacement surgery. And she, um, and she uh, has dementia. And if anyone had uh, said the things about her that was said about Councilman Thornton's father, I would be very, very upset. So I think that uh, they can attack us as public official. At the time, I wasn't a public official, but I was attacked in the night just because I was running for council. So I understand, and I really think, I was shocked that the town of Atherton 
would be that way. I expected people to be highly educated, uh, wealthy, not missing any meals, so why would they stoop that low? So I really want to challenge our residents to take the high road. Let's start the healing process and um, move on. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to close the public comments. Sure. Well, I get a chance to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, the last Since it is about me, um, the site contains a lot of misrepresentations. It contains a lot of bits and pieces. And it's sort of like the lady's comment about the tennis courts. Let me make it clear. I absolutely did say that given so many keys were sent out, is this the best use of Atherton funds? It was a question. It wasn't a statement. It wasn't an opinion. And when the budget sessions were held, and you can listen to the budget sessions, and we allocated a certain amount for restoration. I voted for the amount for restoration. Uh, any council member here can attest to that fact. I did believe they should be restored. And I was even on one of the committees that, voted, that looked into money that was going to restore those tennis courts when the Park and Rec Commission was trying to restore them. But the question has to be asked whether or not when you have 20-something members of the Atherton community, which was the number given, that's the best use of funds. I'm here to represent the entire community. It was a question, and I asked. I don't deny that, and I'm not misrepresenting the town. That's something that has to be done with any use of town funds, and as taxpayers, you all, I would hope, would respect that. That's what the site does. It misrepresents a lot of what I've done. Um, and that's what that email that went around did when it said that I was, or any council member, was in favor of ripping up the tennis courts. Um, it, it attacks me in lots of ways, and that's fair game. I don't mind being questioned as to anything that I've said or represented or people that I have uh, enabled to leave this town. Um, some of them I'm very proud of have left this town because I do not believe they were assets to this town. However, when they go after members of my family, that's a different thing. They didn't buy into this. I did, and I think I've done a good job for this town. They shouldn't go after my son, nor my husband, nor my father. That is not correct. And one of those members is right here, standing in a doorway, who has promoted this in every way he can. That is not fair. Let's not point fingers. Okay. Let's not point fingers to people here at the meeting. All right. Okay. I believe that we all have to do what is right in this town, and I have tried to stand up when I think is always in the best interests of this town, and I will continue to do so. That's all I can say. But. I will not allow people to misrepresent what I have done. And if you want to know what is true and what I believe is right, just ask me. I'm not going to respond to newspapers. I have no in with any newspaper. I will tell you the truth, and I will give you whatever factual information I can to support it. That's all I have to say. I just, <clears throat> just wanted to say uh, I agree with this myth. This is far, far off the line. Uncalled for. I just like to remind ourselves too that uh, let's stick to the issues and debate the issues and let's keep personalities out of it. Let's set an example here. Okay, uh, with that, we're closing public and council comments. So we have to put a time limit on council members. Um, okay, city manager's report. Oh, a report out of closed session. Uh, we had a special meeting uh, starting at 5 o'clock today. Uh, there were three items there. We only accomplished two of them. Um, there was a conference with a uh, labor negotiator. Uh, out of that session, there was no reportable action. And uh, there was also a discussion on the city manager recruitment process, and there's no reportable action at this time on that as well. 
you will have to reconvene after this meeting quickly to, to get a very quick report from uh, our city attorney on issues involving potential litigations. With that, city manager's report. You have my written report. The only thing I'd like to add is uh, July 26, you set a special city council meeting. And it's also the same right as the planning commission meeting. Some of the commission members have asked that we change that to Thursday night, the 27th. <laughs> You said we have a special meeting on July 26th. It's a Wednesday night, which is the same night as the regular scheduled planning commission meeting. I have requests to change it to Thursday the 27th. So no the 25th is July, it's Wednesday, the 25th. So change it from the 25th to the 26th. Um, I have a sub-region on the 26th, the regional housing element that I cannot, uh, that I need to be representing over there. Meeting earlier today. Why don't we have a meeting earlier today? Close to seven o'clock. Have it four. Have it at four o'clock at night in the afternoon. Okay. All right. All right. What, what day are we going to Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Okay. All right, fine. So you bowl something, but look at different times. Okay. And the only other thing I'd add is that our current yeah. rules of procedures, well, it allows council to uh, do a colleague's memo with at least two council members. It's also set in accordance with the city manager. So the city manager has sole discretion to set that You don't need to tell us that. I just want to make that clear because there's a lot of confusion with the president. So. Okay. Exactly. All right. Thank you. We ask a question to the city manager about the system. Sure. Uh, thank you, city manager, for the report. Uh, the, uh, the movement of the donor funds from our books to the county's books was somewhat of a surprise. Well, a complete surprise to me that uh, that took place. It seems to me to be a policy type issue that the council should have had uh, a chance to at least uh, have some voice on this. Uh, I, I have some concerns that we, we're in a unique position, the town of Etherton is in a unique position, although uh, Woodside and Portola Valley do have donor funds, but they're much uh, smaller accounts than we have. Um, I, I personally would prefer to keep those funds at our books, where they would have greater visibility to the council and to the town as to uh, uh, that, uh, those taxpayer dollars that are for library type services. and. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, to, to bring this up and mention that to you and see if we couldn't, uh, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, uh, what I would like to do, what I would like to request is we have greater transparency on, on this, uh, these donor funds, beginning with what is collected from African taxpayers and then what is taken out of the amount that is collected from African taxpayers for operating costs, and any other deductions made by the county to arrive at the donor fund uh, balance that uh, we receive at the end of the year. Uh, I think the Finance Committee should take a, a, a closer look at this, this whole subject as well. Just one more thing. I think the report is getting to be better and better all, all the time. I, I think I was very pleased with the building department's uh, uh, quality assurance program. I had a chance to talk with Mike and, and uh, Ron Beeler about what they're doing in that area. I think that is something I hope the residents will take note of because this is something that will help to ensure that the quality of the services you provide in this area are maintained at a high standard. I just wanted to follow on with Council Member Carlson's uh, comments about the beginning of your report regarding the, um, the JPA creating a separate trust fund accounts for each donor city. So in your first paragraph, it um, said that this action means that in June 2013, when the library JPA determines the amount of excess donor funds for the prior fiscal year, these funds will be deposited into a trust account. So in my, um, uh, which is under the San Mateo County Pooled Investment Funds in the name of the Atherton Library. So am I to understand that this uh, transfer of funds is only going forward? It's, and the, the, the uh, current amount that we have on, uh, on our account of about $6 million or whatever it is, that has stayed, that is staying within the town. Yes. 
So it seems to me a little awkward to do it that way. Why would we do it that way? And, and, and you go on to say that um, in, in, in 2002, the library management um, got uh, authority to transfer the funds back to us. And so then all of a sudden, current library staff decided, I mean, like, why? Did they just wake up one morning in the last couple of weeks and say, gosh, you know, that wasn't the intent of the JPA agreement, uh, and the simple way is to uh, create a separate trust account? I I'm very confused as how this all went down, because for 10 years, the library donor funds have been uh, being uh, accumulated in, and controlled by the town of Atherton, and then all of a sudden, the library staff feels that the 2002 decision was not the intent of the JPA and that they want to transfer it back to the county for control. It just seems odd to me. And then it was done without bringing it to council, without any discussion about it, and then, you know, blank, it's done. So I just have these questions. Deborah and I are still reviewing that. We're trying to get the history of the JPA and why the decision was made in 2002 as well. We met with the library director once and we'll have some follow-up meetings. But I guess I'm really concerned is what made the decision now? I mean, two, when was it? Two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? Something like that? Yes, your representative to the library JPA was well within her realm to do what she did. The council has no policy that, that the representative has to come back to council and get. But she was, she's just one vote. Right. right. And so evidently the whole JPA just said, oh, uh, let's transfer the money back from Atherton's funds back to our control. Why would they do that? It started with the operations committee, with, with the, um, with the